As Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky was broadcasting news of successful counterattacks in the Donbass, a series of powerful explosions shook Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, overnight. Smoke billowed over the city, whose mayor, Vitaly Klitschko, confirmed that the first attacks on the city in weeks had indeed taken place. Klitschko said missiles had hit unspecified infrastructure targets but caused no deaths. The attack comes just as life in Kyiv had begun to resemble a kind of normality after Russia decided to concentrate its forces in the east. OK, let's go straight to DW correspondent Jan Philip Schultz, who's standing by for us in Kyiv. Jan Philip, what can you tell us about the explosions heard in Kyiv early this morning? We were woken up by air raid alerts in the early morning hours and uh, from what we know right now there have been some explosions in two districts uh, in the eastern and northeastern part of uh, Kiev. Uh, several eyewitnesses say that uh, they have uh, they, they saw smoke rising there and uh, Kiev's mayor Vitaly Klitschko said that uh, services are already operating on the ground. Uh, we don't know yet uh, what has been hit exactly, but uh, there is at least one person injured and uh, treated uh, in a hospital, according to local officials. Jan Philip, I'll get you to stay with us. We'll come back to you in a moment. First, let's take a look at the eastern city of Severodonetsk. Ukraine says it has recaptured parts of the city from Russian forces. Ukrainian troops have been battling to hang on there, their last stronghold in the region of Luhansk. For days, Russian firepower has been concentrated in Donbass. Local officials say Ukrainian forces are putting up a fierce fight, though claims from both sides are difficult to verify. In an interview, the governor of the Luhansk region says Russia is suffering significant losses. The reason Russians are blowing up bridges is to stop our reinforcements in Severodonetsk. Our guys are defending the whole Luhansk region, and the Russians are afraid our defenders will stay successful. According to information from Ukraine, Russia has been pushed back from moving into territory west of Severodonetsk, striking a blow to Russian efforts to claim the entire Donbass region. For its part, Russia says its military has managed several successful attacks. This footage is from the Russian Defense Ministry and the location cannot be verified. But Russia says its forces shot down a Ukrainian plane carrying weapons and munitions near the Black Sea port of Odessa. The ministry says Russian missiles also struck an artillery training center in the Sumy region where foreign instructors worked. In the capital, Kyiv, the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine promised America will assist with investigations into thousands of war crimes allegations against the Russian army. I think the efforts of the prosecutor general are really important, and I do not think they should stop or be paused uh, just because the war continues. I think people deserve justice, and they deserve justice now. After more than three months of war, People who have held out for this long are still looking to leave. The evacuations and the deep sense of separation and loss that come with them are a daily reality. Jan Philip Schultz is still with us in Kyiv. Jan Philip, Ukraine is claiming it has recaptured large parts of Severodonetsk. What's the significance of that development and can it be verified at this point? Uh, we can't verify uh, if uh, they really recaptured the majority of Severodonetsk, but uh, we can verify that they have pushed back uh, Russian forces in many parts of the city. But uh, the Russians are still fighting uh, with heavy weapons in the region and they are putting all their strengths into recapturing uh, or into capturing the city, uh, I should say. Uh, it's a highly important city. It's an administrative uh, hub uh, in the region and it also has some important chemical industry. But uh, most uh, importantly, uh, it's uh, part of this small pocket of uh, the uh, Luhansk uh, part of the Donbass region that is still at least partly under Ukrainian control.
And as those battles wage, supply lines in the east are becoming critical to both Russia and Ukraine. Do you know which side is having more trouble, perhaps, now replenishing troops and weapons in the area? Well, for the Ukrainian side, the biggest challenge at the moment is uh, that the promised uh, heavy weapons from abroad will arrive, uh, but all observers say this will probably still take uh, some weeks until they are ready to use in the Donbas region. The Ukrainians also have to deal with heavy losses uh, among their soldiers uh, in, in the region. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, the Russians, as you know, they had uh, severe problems with uh, their supply lines in the first weeks uh, of the war, but this problem for them has significantly reduced in the Donbas region in recent weeks. Uh, they can use a combination of heavy artillery, missile strikes and, and air, uh, air raids. And uh, so uh, they, they, they make advances, but the advances are still much slower than many people predicted some weeks ago. DW correspondent Jan Philip Schultz in Kyiv, thanks so much. Let's cross to Kira Rudik, a member of the Ukrainian parliament and a leader of the political party Golos, who is currently in Dublin. Kira Rudik, uh, it's now been more than 100 days since Russia invaded Ukraine. I'm curious, given the fact that at least at the moment there's no end in sight, how are you personally coping and what do you hear from other Ukrainians? Hello, thank you so much for having me. Well, we do understand that there needs to be a switch from the sprint to the marathon. And we are ready to this marathon. We do understand that it will be tough. We also do understand that we will have to gather our all resilience and all resolve and to make sure that we push them back. This is why I'm traveling right now and this is why I'm uh, calling for every single leader of every single country to give us what is necessary, to give us the weapons, to give us the money, to give us the supplies, so we can make this final push to push Russians back. Because while we have the support of our allies, while we have the results of our people, I'm very sure that we can win this war. You talk about uh, uh, the international community coming together for these weapons. Germany and other Western countries have promised Ukraine more advanced weapons with intense fighting going on in the Donbass. Are you concerned about whether they will reach Ukrainian troops on time? Yes, I'm concerned about that because it's only now when we started receiving the weapons and supplies that we were promised like two to three months ago. The logistics is complicated. It's not Amazon Prime. We do understand that. But mm. we also understand that uh, our allies are working uh, on making the logistics faster. And we do understand that they are uh, trying to get it to us in time. So what we can do from our side is to make sure that logistics within Ukraine is working properly and that uh, uh, we are, uh, once the weapons are crossing the border, we deliver it to the front as soon as possible. Mm. As you well know, there have now been six sanctions packages directed against Russia. This week, the EU agreed on the latest, a ban on most oil imports. Is this enough in your view? No, this is not enough. Well, first of all, these sanctions are half measures. So the EU allowed Hungary to push them back and allow partially their oil to be, uh, to be still used. Secondly, they will only start working in six months from now. So my people will have to stand still and fight for six months before they actually start working, because, uh, before European countries will stop paying a billion dollars a day for Russian oil. Understood. Um, that is uh, Kira Rudek, a member of Ukrainian parliament and a leader of the political party Golos. Many, many thanks.